Our pastor, Michael, and his wife, Lindy, stand before you today with their two boys, Aidan and Regan, with their new little daughter and baby sister, Azaria Chantel Lauren Chamberlain, who you have lent us, Lord, and we're here to dedicate her life back to you. We would ask the family and friends and congregation to stand and promise to set a proper example for this child as she grows up. All clear to the church, mate. Jesus. Ha! Have a look at those fucking Adventists. Talk about up yourself. Money, mate. More than you can poke a fucking stick at. I think this will fit you in a bit. Two months time. It will. In here, Jenny. I've finished it. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. Thought I'd come and help you pack. Oh, well, I'm pretty much ready. Black? Oh, yuck. <laughs> that was my baby dress. Oh, was it, darling? Yes. <laughs> I like black. You may not believe that your body is a temple of God, but tonight we face not a belief, but a fact. And the fact is that your body is the only body that you will ever own. Now, I want you to throw away your cigarettes, your pipes, your tobacco, your cigars, before they throw you away. Hi, honey. How are you? Oh, well, I'll get everything done. Mm -hmm. I recorded six weeks of programs. I swear when I had to see, I finished my counselling. Just. Do you remember to post my study leave application? I did. Good. Well, I think it's time we started our holidays, don't you? Ah, uh, this is where we are here. Mm -hmm. Where did Gran and Granddad live? Well, they live down here. Mm -hmm. And this is where we lived last year near Cairns. And up here, right up in the north, yeah. is where you catch the biggest barramundi in the world. Which is where Daddy really wanted to go for holiday, but uh, your mother had other plans. What's a barramundi? A fish dinner for 12. Not the ones your father catches. <laughs> now, now. And this is where we're going, boys, down here. Devil's Marbles, mm -hmm. the Olgas, mm -hmm. and Ears Rock. The biggest rock in the world. Wow. up on his camel. Hello. And I Hello. Ride, and we all went oh, riding around that ring and my okay. camel went <laughs> and his camel went <laughs> <laughs> For Daddy. Smile, Daddy. That's a good girl. Good girl. Just wind it on, darling. Just wind it on. Okay. I'll rush it to the top. Smile for Mummy. 
Buckle the boys. Boys. Mm. Get that little body in there. Bit better. There. Oh, you love your butt. You see, Daddy? Where is he? Daddy. You right there, darling? Well, don't want to miss the sunset, you know. Yeah. Might want to see if the boys are in their pajamas. Might even try to get them in the car. Oh. Uh, boys. Come on, you got to be a teacher. Oh, come on. Look, I'll give you three more guesses. If you don't get it by then, well, well, maybe I'll tell you tomorrow. A bank clerk. I'll be buggered if you're not a bank clerk. <laughs> Regan went right out to it. I can't get Bobby to settle, though. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I don't know your names, but this is my wife, Lindy. Hi. G'day. And this is little Aiden. Is he playing Hi. games with you? Yeah. And I'm Michael. He's a terror when he's on his holidays. Oh, he couldn't be as bad as this one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sally. Hi. No. Hi. Reg. Yeah. Yes, yeah, with Dingo. Here, fella. Oh, don't encourage him, Michael. The signs say he shouldn't. I saw you this afternoon, going up the rock with a baby in a backpack. Carrying a six-pack. I thought you were cracked. It's bloody thirsty work, climbing. Can I have a look, see? Oh, yeah. You know, Greg, the worst thing for a thirst is alcohol. Oh, you've got to be joking, mate. The worst thing for a thirst is sand. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can't get the blankets on it. She's so Hello. tiny. Yeah, she's she's beautiful. And what's your name? That's Chantel. No. Chantel, Michael. That's this one's second name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you don't happen to know what it means by any chance. Oh, it's French for gypsy lead singer, I think. <laughs> Back Street Station. I've been in town ten times a day. Oh, come on, you're never going to get me to believe you're a farmer. That's a beautiful bike. Get it's a out. red Triumph Twin 500. What are you looking for, Aiden? Absolutely a mouse. Fantastic mm. bike. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life is to sell it. Oh. <laughs> it's down here, sweetheart. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> the cheeky buggers. Wow. I had one follow me back from the rubbish bin before. Yeah. These are ready, honey. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, I think this little one's finally conked out. I'm gonna go put her down. Bedtime. Be right back. Wanna try one of these, Greg? Hmm. Yeah, I've got some room left. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Shit! What kind of bloody sausage is that? Vegetarian. Oh, Christ. Now I know what you are. You're Bugs Bloody Buddy, aren't you? Jesus, feed the man meat, mate. <laughs> oh, Ace. Dad, Dad, give it this. This is tops. But if I had the day, I'd buy a BMW RT1000. It is a beautiful bike. It'll do in excess of 255 miles an hour. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. In free fall. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> Crikey, how's your kidneys? <laughs> Fair garden even started yet. Never trust a man who doesn't drink. Can I, uh, 
tempt you, Michael? Have you any idea what that stuff has done to your brain, Craig? Oh, Chuck, what? she said. That's Azaria crying, honey. Pardon? That's Babby, honey. Are you sure? She was fast asleep. Are you trying to tell me there's something wrong with drinking beer? Well, Greg, they've done tests in the United States about the correlation between alcohol and alcohol. Go, get out. University. The dingo in the tent. Did, did you go to university, Greg? Dingo's got the baby! Under you can drink it. God, no, please, God, no. The dingo's got my baby! What? Coming. I can't see. Hayden, wait here. I can't see. Jesus, I'll look after her, darling. Now you stay by the tent. I have to keep looking, and you have to be there in case your little brother wakes up. Okay? I've got to keep looking, darling. You stay here. I need a torch. Here, take mine. No God, there's no beam. What are you doing, mate? What are you lost? I've lost my baby. And a fifty three face. Come on, boy. Come on. There's a good come on. Oh, he's all right. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. No, look, see? Let's just tuck it out. He's fine. Now, look, I'll just be sitting outside on this rail here, all right? Just outside, OK? Hey, careful up the step on any tracks, you blokes, won't you? Whatever we find, mate, there's no joy for you. You know that, don't you? I've seen what dogs do to lambs, mate. That one there. You're the parent. Yeah. How big was the child? Nine weeks. Nine to ten pounds. God. Have you double checked inside the tent? Yeah, of course we have. What was it wearing? White jumpsuit. White. Everything white. It was wearing white. Ian, get white jumpsuit, rock. white matinee oh, jacket. Just, just stay close to the camp in case I need you, please. Constable, Mary. we want our daughter returned to us, no matter what. We want her back. Has anyone seen the head ranger? Restored to their mother's arms. Mrs. Chamberlain, I'm 
Bobby Downs. I'm the district nurse here. How long's the baby? A little over an hour. just there. Might have dropped it this close. And I, I couldn't bear that. She died because we didn't look in the right place. been out there for ages. We should get you to a motel. Oh, we have to stay here for the police. Besides, we don't have the money. Oh, look. Uh, people? Uh, folks? It's my daughter you're looking for. And uh, I want to thank you all for what you're doing. I'm a minister of religion. And I know that nothing happens in the world unless God allows it. And I know that there's little hope any longer of finding our little daughter alive. But I am thankful that we will see her again at the, re at the resurrection. Let us pray. Lord, be with these willing and kindly people as they help look for our little one tonight. Help them look like a morgue in that tent. Room for that over here. Oh, that'll be all right. Always keep it down there. Is this an expensive motel? You don't have to worry. I've spoken to them. You can stay as long as you need. There'll be no charge. should have warned us. The signs never said. I'd have slipped them on the car if only I'd known. If only we'd known. There has to be a reason. There's got to be a reason. Well, we slipped her in the tent. And I zipped it up and I put Regan down. I should have zipped it up when I put her in. Even if it was only for a minute. Oh, if 
What are we going to tell our parents, Michael? They never even saw us, are you? I'm freezing. You can't be freezing. I've got the heater on. What are you doing? My sleeping bag. You can't do that. It's got blood in it. Yours has. Mine hasn't. I'm sorry. Not I'm freezing. Heating or not. It's so cold. And she was so little. Jesus will keep the dingo's mouth shut like he did Daniel in the lion's den. And he won't let him eat our bobby. Oh, darling. She's so little. Jesus wouldn't let her have any pain. But our bobby had a little cold, you know. It's so freezing out there. Daddy and I believe Bubby's dead, sweetheart. And Jesus is going to look after her now wherever she is. All home to heaven. And she'll be better because Jesus will make her better. She won't have the hiccups anymore, will she? <laughs> Police are here. Sorry, Mr. Chamberlain, no news yet, I'm afraid. Um, will you be in later for me to bring around a notification of death to the coroner's court? Oh, yes. Yes. Or, or in the office phoning our parents. Thank you. Michael, you'd better ring your president, too. Mummy, where's Bobby? Hi, Mrs. Chamberlain. Thought you might like some help with the boys. Oh, thanks. I got some lassics from their clinic. Beg your pardon? Tablets help dry up your milk. Oh, yes. And, um, you'll be needing this breast pump most likely. Mr. Chamberlain? There are press calling. I have the ABC radio on the line. They insist on talking to you. Oh. <clears throat> what would you advise? We were just about to eat. Uh, we heard a cry out, and my, and my wife hurried back to the tent. She saw a big yellow dog coming out of the tent. Over. It was a dingo, Michael, not a big yellow dog. A dingo. Azaria uh, Chantel Lauren. Over. What difference does it make? Right, that's what... Well, it had probably stalked the baby because we'd been there the second night. Listen to this. To many, this is this is called Ears Rock, but to us, it'll always be Azarius Rock. Is that you, Mr. Chamberlain? Over. Speaking Look, I was uh, wondering whether you might be able to take a few photographs to run with this story. Uh, <laughs> well, look, we can't get up there to cover this, unfortunately. There's just no way. But you do want people to be warned about the dangers up there, don't you? Over. Let me take some photographs for his newspaper. You don't have to if you don't want to. She'll never have a grave. Nothing to remember her by. <laughs> Boys, just stand in front of the tent. Just keep going, if you would. Thank you. Right through. Mr. Chamberlain, when you're ready. 
Well, we were very shocked, of course, but uh, at that stage we still had some hope that... Uh, yeah, uh, can we just do that again or just... No, that's okay. I've, I've done some journalism myself. I think I know what you mean. Okay, we're right rolling. Okay, thank you. And go. Well, it was shocking, but um, we just held out some little hope. But when we saw the spots of blood on the tent, we knew as we looked that uh, this was a very quick event. And this morning when we saw the sharp, ripped, jagged marks on that very thickly woven blanket, that this was a powerful beast with very sharp teeth. It was more than a domestic dog that did this. Okay, stop it there. It gets boring after this. I'll run this. I want to cut to her. That won't cut. Yes, it will. It'll cut if you wait till after the van right there and put his last line over to, to disguise the question. And I want some uh, good sci-fi music to go over this to give it some atmosphere, understand? Muses art, huh? I want that. We knew that this was a powerful beast with very sharp teeth. There's more to this than meets the eye. Domestic dog. Hey, Jack, did you hear that? Oh, I just yelled. It wasn't time to go and tell people. Has anybody got a torch? The dingo's got my boat. The dingo. They must think we come down the last bloody shower. The parents, Michael and Lindy Chamberlain, both Seventh-day Adventists, say they've accepted the baby's death as the will of God. They're expected to leave Ayers Rock tomorrow for their Mount Isa home. Christ, I don't believe this. They could have picked somewhere else. New don't blame a found... dingo, a dumb animal who can't defend itself. Well, I can't believe how the dingo can have taken the baby and it's never been found. Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes? Inspector Gilroy and Sergeant Lincoln. I'm sorry we have to interview you. Yes, all right, I'll come here. Thank you. Lord, help me to talk about it. I believe you've already given Constable Morris uh, some items for identification this morning. What has he done again? That's the dingo that took Bubby. And where did the dingo take Bubby? The dingo took Bubby shopping. He loves shopping. It's never happened before. That's right. It's a big deal. That's 10 pounds. That's what the baby weighs. Go on, have a go. Now, you can't tell me a dingo got halfway up the hill without taking a breather. How long could you hold that for? How long could you hold that That's it? right. Just feel the weight of it. It's the parents. It's the way the parents what a dingo go on. Was. We've come to shoot the dog snipper. I'm sorry. Okay. Let him get used to the idea. Huh. Look who's here. Morning, Mrs. Chamberlain. We don't want to shoot any dogs that we don't have to. Well, they're all bits, there's nothing like it. Said I'm not taking another photograph. We found more blood on Aidan's parka. Oh, no, 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 no. We have enough blood with the blanket. Oh, good. It's the only warm coat he has. Well, you, <coughs> you have a list of the places we'll be. Fine. You'll be advised of the date of the coroner's inquest. We should search that car. They've had it bad enough. Michael Chamberlain and his wife Lindy are expected to arrive home late today. The Chamberlains were on a camping trip at Ayers Rock at the time.
consider yourselves fortunate when all kinds of trials come your way. For you know that when your faith succeeds in facing such trials, the result is the ability to endure. Make sure that your endurance carries you all the way without failing, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, he should pray to God, who will give it to him, because God gives generously and graciously to all. But when you pray, Michael said it'll upset him, just put it over there. They're not locals. Yes, can I help you? Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes, that's right. I'm from the Woman's Day. We rang you? Oh, yes. Can I just say how sorry I am? I'm a mother myself. And please accept the condolences of everyone at the Women's Day. Thank you. Look, we'd like to tell Azaria's story, Mrs. Chamberlain. To make sure that this never happens again, to warn everyone. We'd put her on the front page of our magazine and show the whole world what a beautiful baby she was. May we come in? There's no sense in wasting good money. No, I'll give it to Wendy for her lobby. Don't worry, I'll put it back the way I found it. Bloodstained baby clothes found at Ayers Rock are believed to be those of Azaria Chamberlain, allegedly dragged from her family tent by a dingo last week. A tourist found the white jumpsuit, singlet, nappy, and booties folded. Folded? At the bottom of a cave near a dingo lair. The results of a Where's forensic a investigation jacket? into the clothing to be conducted in Adelaide we are expected within a few days. However, the baby's father, Mr. Michael Chamberlain, seems convinced that his daughter was taken by a dingo. When we saw the spots of blood in the tent, we realized as we looked that this was... Michael, did you talk to them? No, they uh, used... That's the when we were at the rock. Sharp, ripped. I've been instructed. I'm in charge of the Chamberlain investigation now. Oh, Darwin. Politics. Been reading through your reports. I noticed. This doctor's rumors from Mount Isa. Did you check it out? Yes, I have. Well, they seem groundless. And what about this stuff here about sacrificing the wilderness, the name? It's, it's a pretty it's a weird name, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, I heard it means sacrifice in the bloody wilderness. Now, that's what, fair you reckon they, fair what, you reckon they took the kid up there to sacrifice it? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. The whole group? They probably did. The kid was always dressed in black. And so was the bloody mother. She dressed it in black all the Yeah, well, I heard a rumor that the kid was really bloody cracked and she couldn't handle it. And that's what happened. Yeah, but there was supposed to be an accident before they got there. He's supposed to fall out of the trolley jeep. Now, if something was wrong with and him... And their seventh day adventures. Those sort of people don't like children that aren't normal. Tell me what really happened to your little sister. You can tell me. I won't tell anybody else. Well, Sergeant Charwood, would you care to identify the doctor that made those allegations? No comment. 
I'm told that the dingo tracks headed off. At least the slides I forgot to pick up before we went to the... away. Mum and Dad! Come and have a look. Oh, yes. It's a new bike. It's Regan. I didn't realise I thought mm. I must have been at the end of the roll. I quite like that one. So she still had her hair. She was so beautiful, I wish it. I wish I'd seen her. The last time I stood before you was also at the invitation of the Chamberlain family. That was a happier day. We celebrated the birth of their little daughter. We welcomed her into the heart of our church, dedicating her life to God and asking for his blessing and guidance in her life. A life that has suddenly, sadly ended. A lot of people watching would ask why you're prepared to be interviewed. Hey, Dal, coming up with this, will you? Why are you making your grief so public? Jesus, what a wake. You know, we believe that this experience uh, has been needful for a lot of people. Uh, if they can realize, too, that, uh, that there is a chance, that there is an opportunity uh, to be at peace, to be at rest with the help of the Lord. <laughs> Michael's not in jail. No, he's not. He's at a church convention in Townsville. The police? They never. Oh, that's a load of Aussie bulldust. They're playing games with you. Yeah, well, I don't blame you being worried. Yeah, right out, Peter. Thanks for calling. Bye. Was that Michael's brother? Can you believe it? The rumours are in New Zealand already. A lie goes round the world while truth's still putting its boots on, sweetheart. I'm going to do something about it. Markets. Chamberlain interview, take one. Can you tell us about some of the rumours that are going around town? Uh, yes, one story is that... Yes, well, one story is that we are part of a bizarre cult that's part of the Jones Massacre. South America, that we're part of that. Uh, another one that's come back just this afternoon is that uh, because we're placing the care and Thanks, Mark. Drop, uh, that this is the other half of a bizarre murder ritual, taking away the sins of the entire Seventh day Adventist church. This is a photo of Azaria's clothing, and it shows bad blood stains and a bad tear on the left arm. And it would seem difficult for a dog to get the baby out of there. I mean... Yes, well, if you've ever seen a dingo eat, there's no difficulty at all. Uh, if you've seen them eat the carcass of a cow, something like that, they never eat the skin. They use their feet like hands and they just pull back the skin as they go. They just Oof. peel it like an orange. And uh, if you'll notice here, on the hands, for instance, uh, there is blood as well. And... Uh, Tough little nut. Crack walnuts on her face. But don't you understand? They're usually going to sell their lousy papers. People love this rubbish. Will you put us on the front page or all over the television? I won't have it. Do you hear me? Sorry, I won't have it. This has got what, to stop. What they'd already written was much worse. I just tried to correct them and give them the, the facts. Look, all. will you listen to me? These people are understand the facts. I'm told there's no trace of saliva on the clothes, none whatsoever. What, none? And our experiments so far tell us that the cuts on the jumpsuit weren't made by dingo's teeth either. Right. Jesus Christ. According to the cops, the forensic blokes reckon there's no way a dingo could have killed that Chamberlain kid. Not by the state the clothes were in. I tell you, these bloody Chamberlains, they wouldn't know the bloody truth if it got up and bit him on the ass. Yes, Lindy. 
can't tell. I suppose you're the front. Oh, yeah. Now I can put a face to the voids. Come in. Thanks. Well, I see you're packing up. Yes, we're moving back to Avondale College. My husband's study leave came through. Well, I'm glad I dropped by. I'm gathering information for the coroner's inquest. Fine. It's about time something was done. The Northern Territory Police have been hopeless. I'm from the Northern Territory Police. Oops. <laughs> it's my husband, Michael. Pleased to meet you. Graham Shelwood. Hi. How do you do? Feeling is very high here in Alice Springs as the first sessions of the Azaria Chamberlain inquest start today. Alice Springs is the focus of the nation's media. Oh, If anything, our faith has been strengthened by what's happened. Pastor Chamberlain, you believe that Azari's death was an act of God, don't you? Chamberlain was extremely severely depressed after the birth of Azari. Do you believe Azari's death was a punishment for travelling on your Sabbath? Well, is it not the case that you wrote some sort of thesis on dingoes when no, you were at college? It is not the case. That's a press invention. But that arose from the Women's Day article. Well, I thought it came from a newspaper. Was the Women's Day article accurate? No, it was the most inaccurate article of all, or at least of the ones that I've read so far. <clears throat> In fact, there are only about five reporters who write exactly what you say, and the rest of them use a little bit of license. Perhaps I could read you something from Dr. Brown's report. There were several small cuts in the baby blankets, but there was no evidence of tooth marks. Well, the teeth cut, don't they? A forensic dentist finds no evidence of tooth marks. Does that concern you? Well, of course it concerns me. But he doesn't know what caused the cuts. And if he can't say what happened, how can he say what didn't happen? So you're not prepared to accept his expertise in saying that there were no I'm teeth marks? I'm not saying that. I'm saying what I'd like is a full answer, not a half answer. I'd like to know more than anyone else what happened to my... My baby daughter. There are native creatures of this country and we are using them as a scapegoat now. Yeah? What about it? They're still a wild animal. They've Look, still got to kill for their They are prey. a native creature of Australia. They're a beautiful animal now. If you tell me that that I'm, bitch I'm is not... innocent and a dingo is guilty, I'll punch a fucking idiot. Oh, that's, that's, that's really I... lovely, Red. Hands up all those that think she's guilty. <coughs> Come on. Now, Mr. Chamberlain. Pastor. Pastor. If I could ask you about the hair colouring on the head of the baby in the photograph that you took of Mrs. Chamberlain with the baby at the side of Ayers Rock. Thank you. <coughs> I'm sorry, would you repeat that, please? If I could ask you about the hair colouring on the head of the baby in the photograph that you took. We seek a short adjournment, Your Worship. Uh, we support the application, Your Worship. Court is adjourned for five minutes. Someone's threatened to kill him. We think it's somebody in the courthouse. In Alice Springs, a death threat has interrupted the Azaria Chamberlain inquiry. Shortly Justice after Justice Barrett ordered 24 hour protection for the Chamberlains following the death threat here Justice in the Alice Springs Barrett court. Justice Barrett will move the Azaria Chamberlain inquest to Ayers Rock tomorrow in order to make a first hand inspection of the Chamberlain campsite and the nearby barbecue. I don't believe it. Oh, well, that's it. Why should I let them know how I feel? From now on, I'm going to keep myself to myself. I'm not going to show them anything. People can turn on you like a pack of hungry animals, can't they? What a racket! Probably be a bomb. Be ridiculous. There's a bomb then, is there? You've been informed, have you? <laughs> no. Well, uh, yeah, there's a, a bomb. We'll have to take you up on the pool. Every time we open the front door, the media goes nuts. Waiting for a pajama shot. I told you, Michael. <laughs> to you, Pastor and Mrs. Chamberlain, and through you to Aidan and Regan. 
May I extend my deepest sympathy. You've not only suffered the loss of your beloved child in the most tragic circumstances, but you've all been subjected to months of innuendos, suspicion, and some of the most malicious gossip ever witnessed in this country. I've taken the unusual step of permitting these proceedings to be televised today in the hope that by direct and accurate communication, such innuendos, suspicion and gossip may cease. This case clearly emphasises that a choice has to be made between dingoes on one hand and tourism on the other. Cheeky bastard. Once again, on national television. television. I've had the occasion to criticise the work performed by the Northern Territory Police. He doesn't know shit from Clay, this fella. Well, what's his religion? Non-reporting of the spray bloodstain on the exterior of the tent resulted in this investigation being diverted in the wrong direction. Now, I'm satisfied that Dr Brown, an acknowledged expert on bite marks of humans, used his best endeavours to learn what he could of what had been, until this case, an unknown field. In the light of his straightforward admission that he had no experience in examining bite marks in clothing, it would be dangerous to rely on his evidence in that regard. I thus find that Azaria Chantel Lauren Chamberlain, a child then of nine weeks of age... I think they're both bloody age, guilty. I don't care what anyone says. Shut up and listen. You might learn something for a change. ...met a death when attacked by a wild dingo whilst asleep in a family's tent at the top camping area, Ayers Rock. I further find that neither the parents of the child nor either of their remaining children were at any degree whatsoever responsible for this death. I find that the name Azaria does not mean and never has meant sacrifice in the wilderness. I find that after her death, the body of Azaria was taken from the possession of the dingo and disposed of by an unknown method, by a person or persons name unknown. Court is adjourned. Sergeant Charwood, are you up by the coroner? Sergeant Charwood, what's your opinion? Lindy, 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 Lindy. Why do you think people wouldn't accept the dingo took the baby? Well, perhaps because this is the first in Australia documented. Michael, Michael, what's accounted for your strength? The Lord Jesus Christ is a very dear friend of ours, our saviour, and the. The peace of God has kept us from being very foolish in our own lives. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, we have something here that you may like to see. This is a picture of Azaria as she really was. To prove to the world that she, as you see, was the most beautiful thing. Look what these poor prawns are doing now. Anything to get their heads on the TV. Oh, yes. He's the top in his field. Professor Cameron, yes, London. And he's very keen to examine the jumpsuit in particular. But apparently I need permission from the minister to take it out of the country. Oh no, I'm going anyway, so there's no cost involved. I'd like to welcome, as the new semester begins, all the new students and their families who've come to live and study with us here at Avondale. I mentioned one family in particular, that of Pastor Michael, and Lindy Chamberlain for the fine example they set when the world harshly judged them and their church. Lindy, Michael, you've both become household names over the past six months. How has that affected your lives? Oh, well, we're managing, aren't well, we? Things don't? are starting to settle down now. The boys are in their new school here, and Michael started his new MA course. That'll take about a year, and then we're off to America well, we for hope. his doctorate. That would be a doctorate in theology? <laughs> Give us a break. A doctorate in health science. So we'll have to call you Dr. Chamberlain, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but... Well, I suppose so, but we're just a couple of ordinary Australians, really. And what are your plans, Lindy? <laughs> well, I've got a new house to get organised, haven't I? <laughs> and I'm also starting my Bachelor of Education. Rumours still persist about that tragic night at Ayers Rock. We ignore them. The court put that straight. Well, these are the product of sick minds, unfortunately, and we seem to have our fair share of those in places that you wouldn't really expect to find them, too, I'm afraid. So, it's full steam ahead for the future. Well, we hope so. You bet. 
Okay, I'll ask the questions. I'll do the noddies in between. It's a tie straight. <clears throat> Lindy, Michael, you've both become household names over the last six months. How's this affected your lives? Right, let's run through it again. Team two is going here to Melbourne to the Whittakers. Team three to the Habies. Team four flies to Western Australia, Esperance to the Wests. Team five to Hobart to the Lowe's. It's essential that everybody be in place and ready to make contact with our targets at 0800 sharp. That's our time. No slip ups. I want these witnesses hit cold. I don't want one lot ringing another lot before we've had a chance to question them. Michael. Hi, Good day. I've got to go shopping for a couple of hours. Can I dump this brute oh, on you? Yeah. Anything to get out of mowing. <laughs> Hello, Murray. You'd be a good boy. Let's go good at the chooks, shall we? Hmm? That flyer. What are you looking for, sweetheart? Nothing. Hmm. Are you sure? Can I help you look for it? What is it? Did the dingo take it on your Bowie's home, Mummy? What, Murray? Oh, I, we need to see Murray, Auntie Helen. I've just put him down for the night. We need to see if he's OK. Down with his own mummy and dad. Minia. Here's a few, love. Well, it's the seventeenth, and I thought a gesture was in order to mark the anniversary of our unfortunate. Took hours to find them. She was so beautiful. And I wanted something beautiful for you in her memory. I get so angry and frustrated, you know, because I hardly even knew her. I hardly even took any notice of her, you know. <laughs> I hardly knew her, Zari. <laughs> oh. Did you hear the one about the Irish dingo? Hit ate the tent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got about 90 seconds to just make it right. Let's go. Oak of control, this is units one and two. We're on the move out. Out of the bath, did we? Well, what can we do for you? A warrant was issued in Sydney yesterday to search your premises for certain property. Can I see that? Well, this is a connection way. Fresh information has come to hand. Forensic evidence. What, what sort of evidence? Can I read? Yeah, yeah, well, all I can tell you is the Chief Minister's ordered a new investigation. Feel free to get dressed. You realise today's our Sabbath? Excuse me, I expect the cupboards to be put back the way they were. How long will you have our things this time? You can rest assured compensation's available. 
Yeah, and what about the damage last time? Boys, don't ruin Mummy's oven. We've received no compensation at all from last Can time. you tell me why things that weren't even at Ayers Rock are going? Look, I don't give a fuck about a freeway accident, right? I've been given a tip that the Chamberlain case has been reopened, and I want that chopper. I don't know, there's some new evidence. What new evidence? Yeah, all right, hang on. Well, the coppers won't tell you everything, mate. They like to keep you on the hook. Hey, Jim. Have a look at this. This is the green tent. Well, no, that's a brown and orange tent. Uh, green tent's under here. Sarge, got this. Yeah, right, we'll take There's that. There's another one up there. Green. Green. still available, Mr. Chamberlain? No, it's being fixed at the moment down by the lake. I'll take you there myself later on. You'd never find it. Jesus Christ! What's this? Well, I use this for public health lectures to scare smokers, you know? Maybe you still got it. Christ knows how they fit all this in one car. Beats me. Is this your camera bag? Yeah, but it's not the one I had at the rock. I'll get it for you. Michael, the switchboard's jammed with calls from the press and television. What's happened? Well, it seems they've reopened the inquiries and... How come the press knows so soon? I don't talk to the press. Now, oh, this is shocking for all of us. New evidence has come to hand on the disappearance of Azaria Chamberlain. Police will review all evidence and investigations will begin anew. Sir, does that, does that, does that, does that mean that you're anticipating a second inquest? No comment. Well, there's a strong rumor. I've got a mate in Darwin who knows the sister of the brother-in-law of the copper on this case. They reckon she's covering up for a kid. That's why they can't break her. You wouldn't like to trot that past me again, would you? And I understand they found a little white baby coffin in the house with an old Bible with a passage mark. For God's sake, give it a bloody rest, will you? Let me tell him what the passage was about. I've never asked you this before, but did you kill your baby? If I answer that question, I'll be giving you an interview, and my lawyer has advised me not to speak to you alone. No, I deny the conversation never took place. Come on, it's just between you and me. Did you kill your baby? Oh, come on. If I'd done it, why invent such an unbelievable story about a dingo? Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> You're crediting me with the perfect murder. Don't sell yourself short. The baby's clothes have been examined by Professor Cameron in London. Oh, I didn't know there were any dingo experts in London. He's a world-class forensic scientist. He found a handprint on the jumpsuit. It's made when it was wet with blood. A small female hand. Oh, well, then I'm back in the hot seat, aren't I? What else was in this report? The baby was decapitated. Professor Cameron, the world's leading forensic pathologist, tendered ultraviolet photographs, revealing baby Azaria was held by a human hand while she was still bleeding. This evidence appears to be supported by the discovery of an arterial spray on the underdash of the Chamberlain's car, consistent with the spray from an artery of a cut throat. The second inquest into the disappearance of baby Azaria Chamberlain reached a sensational conclusion today. Lindy Chamberlain was committed for trial today, charged with the murder of her 10-week-old daughter, Azaria. Her husband, Michael, was charged as an accessory after the fact. <laughs> How can they? How can they, the bastards? Sorry, that's the only word for them, bastards. 
Now we are on show, and we ask you for help. Let us find the strength to swallow the anger and the hurt, and to find the courage to face the future. Do like we planned. Try and have another baby. I worked it out. And it's now or never. Because if I go to jail, I'll never have another chance. And if I don't, why should they run our lives? But it's time, darling. If we start now, I won't be showing at the trial. And when it's all over, no one need ever have known. The boys are praying for a little baby sister. So am I. Prayer. What good is prayer? The only thing God's good for at the moment is stop me from cutting my throat because that's what I feel like doing. Hell can't be worse than this. My life is finished. How can I be a pastor anymore? Who'd listen to someone who's supposed to help kill a child? I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. <sighs> is there any reason why there'd be a quantity of blood in your car? Well, the kids have had cuts and bumps in the car. And the nose bleeds, and Azaria vomited once or twice, if that means anything. And you know, we're both trained first aiders. We've attended some bad road accidents, Michael. What was the name of that bloke we picked up in Cairns? Michael? What difference does it make? Well, he bled like a stuck pig. I don't suppose there's any hope of finding him. Look, I don't know his name. I don't know where he lives. In Cairns, it's a big town, and it was 18 months ago. And besides, it doesn't explain the blood under the dashboard, does it? We'll be back in a minute. Cockatoos are white, red, and they can be all kinds of colours. Why won't Daddy walk with us? Because he's cracked. He's what? He's concerned for our safety, sweetheart. He wants to walk ahead in case there's someone there. Well, I think he's cracked. No, you're right. It's exactly the same as was one. Have a look at what we've found under the dash. This is this is identical. I reckon there's a real possibility here. Can I photograph this? You can cut it out if you want to. This is incredible. There must be crack. Nobody's going to believe that line of bull. In ten minutes, let me get this straight. In ten minutes, I'm supposed to have taken the baby back to the tent. Put her down. P put on my tracksuit pants, right? Then carted her off to the car, uh, cut her throat, cut her head off with the nail scissors, mind you, stuffed her body back in the camera bag. Have you seen the size of that, by the way? And I hurry up and clean up the blood out the car and then picked up a can of baked beans because Aiden, who's been here, presumably, all the time, watching, I suppose, is still hungry. So I take him back to the tent and take off my tracksuit pants and sprinkle blood, my own baby's blood, round the tent and on Regan. And then, I guess, but when do I make the little dingo tracks round the side of the tent, right around that time, I suppose. And then we have a happy race back to the barbecue, as though nothing had happened. I know it sounds preposterous, but that is the Crown's case. That's what I found. Take a look at this, Stuart. It's exactly the same. 
There's a spray under our dashboard. Good on you, mate. That's the good news today. What's the matter? I've reset the trial for September. September? I'll be seven months pregnant. I look like Humpty Dumpty. Look, they can't do that. The press will slaughter us. They should go back to Glenys, Ruth was saying on the phone. Oh, wait a minute. I might be able to let this out just enough. Let's see this. Hmm. Yes. Michael? Any last minute requests? This is your last chance. Come on, boys. Well, come on in then. Help me close up these suitcases. Come on. Up up here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> you on here. I'm going to squish it down. Set. Mm. Speculation here in Darwin is whether the most publicised pregnancy of the decade will end during... Lily and I are most grateful for your offering to put us up like this, Pastor. Well, we thought you'd be better off here, away from the craziness. Where we can keep an eye on you, as it were. So here we are, not the Hilton, but uh, under the circumstances. To live in a garden shed. The uh, shower and toilets down the path under the house. Oh, the media are going to love that. Now they'll know every time I go to the loo, Michael. This is impossible. Uh, oh, I think we may be more comfortable back where we originally thought. It wasn't much. I took the liberty of cancelling that for you. Be gone by now. There's not a bed in town. Thanks to us. Come on. Come on. Come on. at Darwin Court this morning for the first day of their trial for the murder of their baby daughter, Azaria. Lindy was wearing a pink and white frock with white accessories. You know, women across the nation are trying to work out when the baby's due and also the Zodiac. Well, my guess is Scorpio. Yes. Scorpio! Scorpio! <laughs> Your job in this case is to administer justice according to law, not according to rumour, not according to preconceived notions of. You will hear much of this, ladies and gentlemen, for the simple reason that possibly the publicity concerning this matter has been without precedent in our lifetime. You see in this court a couple of cameras. I don't want you to feel that you're being directly telecast to Australia. That is not so. They were put in for the convenience of the press. Okay, who wants to be in it? Tickets are a dollar apiece. The one who gets the birthday gets the lot. Was there anything in Mrs. Chamberlain's appearance or her demeanor on her return to the barbecue that indicated anything abnormal had happened? No, she seemed solely concerned with feeding Aiden some more food. Was she covered in blood? No. As to the baby's cry, did that cry appear to you to be cut off? Going from experience with other babies, yes. It was a relatively uneventful day, as eyewitnesses to that tragic night at Ayers Rock gave evidence. The witnesses from right across Australia shed little light on the events that led up to the disappearance of baby Azaria. Everyone that was there, they were her friends, her, they witnesses. Were her witnesses. They were all Seventh Day Adventists. They, they didn't know Adventist. each other. Oh, come on, they were it all It was a ritual Adventist. killing. Oh, yeah, they planned it all, did they? And the buckle gave me very, very strongly positive reactions for blood. What about the spray pattern? The spray pattern under the dash gave me a very positive reaction for the presence of fetal haemoglobin. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mrs. Gould, but you got 22 positive reactions for the presence of fetal blood and um, haemoglobin from these tests. That is correct. Did the tests lead you to an opinion of the person whose blood you found and the age of that person? They did. It was all consistent with the blood having come from a baby under three months. Oh. Oh. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what about 
about when we took the jury to view the car? She was behind me, staring. I could feel her burning holes through my back. She, she just stares. She's a witch, you know. Huh? Oh, and I can't stand the way she flutters her eyes at the jury. Makes me want to vomit. I reckon she's got something going with that copper, too. Mm -hmm. Active little monkey tonight. Come have a feel. <laughs> Not just now, my dear. Mm. And what about the outfit? Polka dot? Practically the same as mine. Not to mention the hairdo. That is a demonstration photograph of an Ocaloni plate. Yes. The fuck does that mean? The actual Ocaloni You can get a positive reaction to milk. It's not the same type of reaction as blood, but you do get one. Can. Vomit. Due to the traces of blood in it, yes. Saliva? No. Never? N not that I have seen. Nasal secretions. There is quite often blood in those secretions. The answer is yes? Yes. And if there was blood and saliva, the answer also would be yes? Yes. Rust. Sometimes, sometimes not. You can get it to rust. You can get a positive reaction to rust. Sometimes, with some rusts, yes. And isn't it also a fact that after four days screening, you cannot prove the presence of blood in the compartments or around the base of the Chamberlain camera bag, can you? No. My report states that. Well, what about the real thing? What about the actual Octoloni plates at the end of your tests? Do you produce those? No. Well, they're in Sydney, are they? No. Where are they? They have been destroyed. All of them? Yes. Whose decision was that? It is standard procedure in our laboratory. Professor Chaikin, you examined the tufts from the camera bag to see whether they could have come from the jumpsuit? I did, yes. I would, uh, if you don't mind, Your Honor, uh, demonstrate it by actually cutting. <laughs> <laughs> the mighty Chaikin! Oh. Hang on, my next trick. And you cut it. Some tufts fall off. And you can shake some off. Are you able to express an opinion as to whether or not a dingo's teeth could have made those cuts? I would say no. These are Lindy Chamberlain's scissors. Are these the scissors you first used in your cutting tests? Yes. And? They came apart. The scissors you eventually used for the test, do you concede they are larger than the Chamberlain's? Yes. Therefore far more efficient for your purposes? Yes. I concede that the Chamberlain scissors, as I received them, could not cut jumpsuit material. I'm trying to make it look like a dingo. I've never seen yeah. a dingo yeah. carrying a pair of scissors, have you? No, not really. <laughs> Yet again, Lindy Chamberlain showed no sign of emotion this as the evidence was presented. Can we bring him? She left court with her husband, Michael, and was whisked away. Right. Off, I'm cold. You can't possibly be cold. I'm freezing. Well, then put a blanket on yourself. I don't want to put a blanket on myself. Right. Leave it. I'm roasting. I seem to forget I've got a little furnace blazing away in here. If you want my company, then put a blanket on. The last thing I want at the moment is to put a blanket well, over me. Go in the other room then. All right, I will. And we should have seen to it that it was zipped up. Well, what about that other dingo they told us about? Clawed its way through the tent to get some food. We should have zipped up the tent. You mean I should have zipped it up? Isn't that what you mean? Say it, for God's sakes. Say it. Have the guts for once to say it.
Come on, over here. Yes, we did. Can you imagine a situation where the dingo was able to attack the child, pick it up, and carry it by the face? No. Ah, dogs usually go for the back of the neck or around the shoulder. Right. Now, in this case, having regard for the condition of the jumpsuit, can you see the child being grabbed by a dog by the back of a neck? Not from examination of the collar of the jumpsuit, no. Would you have a look at this photograph, please, Mr. Sims? Now, do you concede, having seen the photograph, that a dog could perfectly easily encompass the head of a child of Azaria Chamberlain size in its jaws? Well, if that doll's head has not been forced into the dog's jaws, I would accept that. Mr. Harris, what is the purpose of a dingo gripping the head of the prey? The purpose is to immobilize the prey immediately and preferably kill it at the same time. And there'd be very little blood because the heart had stopped pumping. Look, I myself have documented a dingo running with a 20 pound baby kangaroo in its mouth over a distance of some 200 yards. Now, we've heard evidence a dingo in the Chamberlain tent was seen to shake its head. Well, it's quite consistent. The shake's obviously intended to, to break the neck. You are now to be shown videotape of an experiment performed at a zoo in Adelaide. While you're looking at this tape, I want you to recall the evidence of Mr. Sims where he concurred because of this experiment that a dingo could take out a baby goat from a suit while undoing only the two top buttons. It is therefore reasonable to assume that a dingo eating a baby human being out of its suit is quite within the bounds of probability. How's that sort doing? Well, we figure we're up against about four not guilty as the poor dunno's. The women are the big problem. You remind them where they live. Professor Cameron, now in your view, is there any evidence on or about those articles of clothing which suggest the child was killed by a dingo? I saw no evidence on any of these garments to suggest that any member of the canine family was involved. Right. Now, in your opinion, is there any evidence suggesting the child was not killed by a member of the canine family? There is evidence to suggest there was an incised wound around the neck. In other words, a cut throat. <laughs> now, this photograph was taken using ultraviolet light. You can see the pattern of bloodied fingers. And here, what may be a thumb, it's the impression of a hand of a small adult. That's a hand, I'm a virgin. Would you align your index finger along the mark that so impressed Professor Cameron? I object to that. The hand is flat. Noted. How many smudges do you see? One, two, three, four. Would you hold your finger up, please? One, two, three. We're going to take some of the wind out of Professor Cameron's sails tomorrow. He's going to bring up the Confay case. What's that? This bloke Confay was murdered in England and three young boys were sent to prison for life based on Professor Cameron's expert evidence. Three years later, the evidence was totally discredited. The boys were freed. Turns out they'd be nowhere near the place, the actual time of death. Oh, the media are going to be pleased. I've got to go to the loo again. Decoy time. Mm. Professor Cameron, when you gave evidence in the Confay case, you weren't armed with the correct knowledge of the attendant circumstances. I agree entirely. I want to suggest to you, Professor, you have done the same thing in this case. I should like to show the Professor photograph 10B. Would you?
Do you call that a neat bundle? No. Did you swear? I rely entirely on Dr. Scott's evidence that there was no saliva present on the jumpsuit. Correct. And yet Dr. Scott's testimony ends with, of course, there is no guarantee there is no saliva elsewhere. There was no saliva present on the samples. He said, of course, there is no guarantee there is no saliva elsewhere. I would accept that. In the Darwin Court today, John Phillips QC told how evidence presented by Professor Cameron in a London murder trial was completely discredited. Well, that's silly, sweetheart. Gran loves you. She won't let me play outside. She's just doing what Mummy told her. It's too, dang it's too dangerous for you to play outside now. Because we're in the paper so much and on the telly. Silly people get silly ideas in their heads. We wouldn't want one of them to come and get you now, would we? <laughs> yeah. Won't be much longer now, sweetheart. Reactions given by the different anti sera against the blood samples taken from the car. I think that the court is familiar from the past that the anti serum, known as anti hemoglobin, has in it antibodies that react with both the alpha and the beta molecular chains, which are found in hemoglobins. For example, a sample could have been obtained from the baby's clothing. Such a model would have made a perfect control to see if your serum was working. You would then want to know... Jesus, how many more days of this? How am I going to work it? Trial basis, you know, five days of extensive forensic evidence that even highly regarded experts can't agree on. I mean, how is it, you know, a, a jury supposed to be uh, making some conclusions? That's right, we could evidence. dispense with the jury. Orthotolidine tests off Toloni plates and electrophoresis. I'll give you ten bucks if you can get hat the globe and into a headline. Well, perhaps the question we should be asking is why none of the Aboriginal trackers who are used in the search for baby Azaria have been called to give evidence at this trial. Look, lady, you can't believe those bludgers. They're always drunk, you know that. Is that the truth, really? That your wife told you she saw a dingo coming out of the tent, she thought it had Azaria, sorry, Azaria, she thought it had Azaria, and you didn't ever ask her why she thought it had Azaria? The tent was empty. She'd seen... I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, could, could you speak up? I... The tent was empty, Mr. Barker. She'd seen the dingo and the baby was gone. Did you not ask her, did she see the baby being carried by the dingo? I don't recall asking her that. I could have asked her that question. You tell us you don't remember? I don't remember asking that question. Do you remember if she ever told you if she saw the dingo carrying the baby in its mouth? She never told me she saw the dingo carrying the baby in its mouth. Pardon? She never told me she saw the dingo carrying the baby in its mouth. In her mouth? In its mouth. Did she ever tell you she didn't see the baby in the dingo's mouth? Uh, you'll have to repeat that question. Did she ever tell you she didn't see the baby in the dingo's mouth? Perhaps Mr. Barker means not what you've heard her say. Did she ever say she, to she you... Did. She did. She did. She uh... did... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. If you don't understand the question... I, 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 I'm not... I'm aware of... I think what you're trying to ask me... Uh, I'll ask Mr. Barker to put the question again. Yes, please. Would you put it again, please, Mr. Barker? Did she ever 
tell you that she did not see the baby in the dingo's mouth? I don't think I can answer that question specifically. Did she ever tell you she saw nothing in the dingo's mouth? She told me the baby... She told me the dingo appeared to have nothing in its mouth, I think. When did she tell you that? I can't say. I, I don't know. Listen, young lady, just you get your face straight before Michael comes in. He needs all the help he can get. Well? How did I go? Am I the truth? You're doing fine, Mike. You had Barker working hard, sweetheart. Jesus, mate, you're a bloody bad witness. He sued me under the hammer for hours and hours and hours with somebody at your throat. But he couldn't you answer wouldn't be the any question. Fit state. But he couldn't answer the question because he was a mess. Look, if he makes Chamberlain look so emotionally incompetent, there's no way anyone's going to believe that he could keep up such a fantastic story. Well, what's Barker supposed to do this? As to the clothing your child Azaria was wearing, could we have the exhibits, please? The jumpsuit. How are you the... feeling, Mr. Chamberlain? All right? Yes, thank you. You're all right. All right. You, you let me know if you're not. Hmm? Perhaps I can approach this in a different way, Your Honor? Yes. Without opening any of those articles, can you confirm they were the clothing your child was wearing? Yes. Right, put the clothing back. Please state what other article Azaria was wearing. She had a white knitted marquee matinee jacket with a p pale lemon edging. What approximate age was this matinee jacket Azaria was wearing? Well, it had been given to me by a, f a friend who'd used it on a two children before me. Some of the jury are upset now. Um, we'll take a short break. The court will rise for 10 minutes. The jury were really upset. That's good. Good it was for Lindy, but it was the missing baby. It's not so good. Could be bad. Mm. Well, I can't let that out anymore. <clears throat> Blowed if I know what I can wear tomorrow. I've never seen you quite so large. Maybe, you know, maybe if you just cut down on the eating. Just you mean quite cut. so fat, don't you, Michael? Yeah. <clears throat> you hate fat, right? I've never been quite this fat, have I? I'm twice my normal pregnancy weight. I wonder why. And you can't stand to look at me. You're so afraid I'll never get thin again the way you like it. Maybe you threatened once to leave me if I got fat. Well, darling, if Mr. Barker has his way, the decision may be right out of your hands. How you bearing up, Lindy? How you bearing up, Michael? Mr. Pibble, you expect to be Did you tell Constable Morris about the matinee jacket? Oh, I did mention it. He was on the move. You heard him say here that you said nothing about a matinee jacket. It's quite possible he was too far away to hear. What's so important about this matinee jacket? It explains the lack of saliva on the jumpsuit, Mary. No, you're missing Why? the point. Oh. What? If he can prove that she's lying about the matinee jacket, then she could be lying about everything else. And if she's lying, she's guilty. So no, there's none on the jumpsuit. No. So she's saying that the Adelaide jacket was, had was missing because they were had the the saliva saliva on it. Yes. Yes. You told us yesterday, did you not, Mrs. Chamberlain, that when you saw the dingo shaking its head, it was halfway through the fly screen. It was on the move through the fly screen. Do you know there was no blood found on the fly screen, do you? Well, I presume there hasn't been, because it hasn't been mentioned. 
Do you say this dog had its head half through the fly screen, shaking a bleeding baby? As I said, again and again yesterday, it was emerging through the fly screen. Shaking its head vigorously? Oh, I couldn't tell you now whether it was shaking its head as it was going through, while it was through, or before it was through, its obvious movement was sh shaking the fly screen at some stage. It was all a matter of, from what? the time I first saw it to the time I was in the back of the tent, it was a matter of a few seconds, very, very fast and moving. And what it had in its mouth, we now know, according to you, was a bleeding baby. Well, that's my opinion. Pardon? That is my opinion. Well, is there any doubt about it? Not in my mind. Is it merely your opinion, or is it something you know is a fact? Something my heart tells me is a fact. Other people don't think so. Did it surprise you there was no blood on the fly screen? No, there was some on the pole. It doesn't really surprise me that there was none there. It would depend on which angle the animal was, or which angle the wounds were. Mrs. Chambers, you say this child was in the mouth of a dingo which was vigorously shaking its head at the entrance to the tent. That is what you firmly believe, is that right? That's right. The dog having taken his area from the bassinet. Take it steady, Mrs. Chambers. You saw blood on the parka. Yes. Would you like a spell, Mrs. Chambers? No, I'd prefer to go on with it, Your Honour. Well, I don't want to have you answer questions when you're feeling distressed. Would you like me to give you a ten-minute break? No, I'd prefer to go on. This has been going on for two years, and I'd like to get it over with. You say the blood on the parka must have come from the baby? Yes. When it was in the dog's mouth? Somewhere around that time. But what other time could it have come from the Look, baby? Look, Mr. Barker, I wasn't there. I can only go on the evidence of my own eyes. We're talking about my baby daughter. Not some object. I know it's difficult, but you must hold your temper. You sound too harsh, too angry. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Chamberlain, it's not going over well with the jury. Try and be more demure. Well, I am the way I am, and the jury will have to get used to it. Mrs. Chamberlain, when this case is over, I will jump on a plane and get the hell out of this place. You could stay here for a fucking long time. I think you not to talk to my wife like I that. I can defend myself, Michael. I'm told don't talk like you normally talk. Watch how you hold your mouth. You look too sour and crabby. Don't get angry. Don't ask too many questions or they think you're trying to be smart. And never, never, never laugh or you're an uncaring bitch. Well, I can't cry to order. And I won't be squashed into some dumb act for the public. Or for you. Mrs. Chamber, is it not the case that your husband declined to search on that Sunday night because he knew the baby was deaf? And he knew you had killed her? Definitely not. You invented the story of the dingo removing the baby from the tent. I did not invent that story, Mr. Barker. It's the truth. You know, the learned prosecutor put many allegations to Mrs. Chamberlain when she was in the stand, didn't he? But there was one allegation the most important allegation in this trial that was never put. And it was the allegation that would have started with the words, Mrs. Chamberlain, I put it to you, the reason you cut your child's throat was. The most important allegation. And it was never put. It was never put because Mr. Barker, one of the best men in the business, just cannot think of any reason why she would do it. Now, no doubt the ordinary crocodile would have gone out of its way to eat this baby. 
But our experience as Australians tells us the dingo does not bear such a reputation. Now, what is this dingo supposed to have done? It managed, if her story is true, to kill the baby in the bassinet, drag it from the basket, shake her head vigorously at the entrance to the tent, and carry her off into the night in such a way that left virtually no clues in the tent in the way of blood or hairs or anything else. It left no blood or drag marks at the entrance to the tent. It was able to pass by the child's mother in full view without disclosing or revealing it was carrying a baby. It managed to kill the child with all the buttons of the jumpsuit done up, and then, if you accept Professor Cameron, it buried the body having undone one top button. So, all in all, ladies and gentlemen, it was not only a dexterous dingo, it was a very tidy dingo. <laughs> Now, there is some common ground between us, between Mr. Phillips and the prosecution, and that is that this is a case of simple alternatives. Either a dingo killed that child, or she was murdered. A dingo or murder. Mr. Barker, in summing up, shifted the onus of proof from the prosecution to the defence when he shifted the emphasis from the almost incomprehensible forensic evidence, claiming it was a case of simple alternatives. He also claimed that the matinee jacket was a complete fabrication on behalf of Lindy Chamberlain. Hey, that, that Barker bloke's as cunning as a shithouse rat. <laughs> Beauty, eh? Don't forget that if ever there was a time when dingoes were becoming a problem at Ayers Rock, it was in August 1980. I ask you, and you'll bear this in mind, if your wife had murdered your child in that car, what would you have done over the ensuing months? Would you still have the car? Would it have been thoroughly scrubbed? Would the scissors still be left in the car? Matters such as that. If Mrs. Lowe heard that cry, you may think the only inference you can draw is that it was Azaria's last cry. That Azaria was still living. She was not, and could not, have been lying dead in the car. Oh, I don't like the way the jury went out. They wouldn't look at me. Well, the judge seemed to sum up in our favour. I think the judge did everything but instruct for an acquittal. Ah, oh, we're home and hose, mate. Do you oh, believe a dingo would take a baby? Yes or no? No. What did Mr. Yeah. Harris say yes, about it? Look, can we sort out the blood thing before we go any further? Oh, look, forget the blood. None of us understand anything about this. Oh, the, the best thing for us is he's found guilty. Fast! Fast! Oh. Gentlemen of the jury, are you unanimously agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the accused Alice Lynn Chamberlain guilty or not guilty of murder? Guilty. <laughs> Is that the verdict of you all? Yes. Bastards! Uh, thank you, Mr. Foreman. You may sit down. Alice Lynn Chamberlain, you have been found guilty of murder. There is only one sentence I can pass on you, that you be imprisoned with hard labor for life. What's 
life in this town? Forever. What are you going to fall? I'm innocent. Yes, Michael, yes, I do. But how can they do this to us? They don't know you, Michael. <laughs> the prison car has arrived. Mrs. Chamberlain. Sensational conclusion to what has to be the most talked about case in Australian legal history. Alice Lynn Chamberlain was today found guilty of the murder of her daughter Azaria and sentenced to life imprisonment with hard labour. Her husband Michael was found guilty of being an accessory to the murder. Sentencing for Mr Chamberlain was postponed until court resumes tomorrow a.m. Lindy was convicted of forensic evidence of expert witnesses from as far away as London. Chief Justice Muirhead today sentenced Michael Chamberlain to 18 months in prison after he'd been found guilty of being an accessory to murder. The judge suspended Michael Chamberlain's 18-month sentence in, he said, the interests of the motherless boys. Placing Mr. Chamberlain on a three-year bond to be of good behavior, Chief what Justice Muirhead said mother. that as he Kids had no previous mother. convictions and was of good character. Daddy! 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 Northern Territory Government has once more refused Lindy Chamberlain's appeal to keep her baby with her after the birth in Berrimah Prison, where she is serving a life sentence for the murder of her baby daughter, Azaria. <laughs> That's it, One more, keep it up. One more. Good. 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 That's Good. it. That's it. Good girl. <laughs> Chamberlain, she's yours to hold for one hour, but that's all I'm afraid. You have to put your hand over her neck, squirt it like this. Why, mate? I know. There you go. Bring us a towel, is it, boy? Well, come on, mate. I'm not very good at this. Lindy and Michael Chamberlain lost their High Court appeal today on a vote of three to two, ending over two years of legal and political battles. 
I am deeply and bitterly disappointed at the decision that's been made at the High Court here today. I'd like to affirm that Lindy and I are innocent people and that we will not stop fighting until our names are clear and the names of our family. I'd like to thank those members of the public who'd... Jeez, talk about flogging a dead horse. horse. And finally, this case isn't over. There she is. Mummy, mummy. Why? There's your mummy. Oh, yeah, there's mummy. Wait to mummy. Let mummy have a look at you. Mommy. Wave. There's mummy. Mama. There's mummy. Mama. That's your mummy. Why do you believe there is such a groundswell of support for the Chamberlains despite the constant legal affirmation of their guilt? Well, legal processes have prevented the previous submission of much of the evidence we now present, which, for example, proves beyond any reasonable doubt that the reagent used to detect the presence of fetal blood, both in the car and on the camera bag, was in fact not suitable for the purpose. And that's supported in writing by the West German manufacturers of the reagent. As for the spray pattern found under the dashboard, the so-called arterial spray, we've discovered the same pattern in 11 other similar model Tiranas. The substance isn't blood and is believed to be sound deadness sprayed on during manufacture. As regards the dingoes, Further examination has shown that... What about the arterial spray? It's the same spray that they've had in 11 other dogs. I'm not having another dinner party ruined by those people. I don't care what new evidence you've got. She's guilty. You must have fallen from up there. Stupid bastard, trying to climb that side. Oh, geez, the dingoes have had a go, haven't they? Yeah. Hey, look! And in national news, five and a half years after the disappearance of Azaria Chamberlain, police have found what is believed to be the missing away. baby's matinee jacket at the base of Ayers Rock. The jacket was found during a search of the area where the body of a fallen climber was discovered by a tourist. The body was found some 150 metres from the spot where Azari Chamberlain's jumpsuit was found in 1980. And from Ayers Rock, police have found an article of clothing which may be connected with the Azaria Chamberlain case. There is a possibility that it is the matinee jacket Lindy Chamberlain claimed Azaria was wearing on the night of her death over five years ago. The find is considered by the Chamberlain's attorney to be of the utmost significance. The absence of the matinee jacket was crucial in Lindy Chamberlain's conviction. Uh, the situation with the matinee jacket is that tests are going to be carried out in Melbourne to determine if this is in fact the same matinee jacket which Mrs Chamberlain claimed her daughter was wearing. Why has Lindy Chamberlain been released before any forensic tests have been conducted? Uh, the discovery of the matinee jacket has no bearing on my decision to release Mrs. Chamberlain. Well, when is your decision to release her? What is it based on then? It has been on compassionate grounds. Here she comes! Here she comes! Thank you very much. Jan is looking after them. Oh, it's taking me a while to get this organised, won't it? 
I'll never find anything. <laughs> Not too soon. I'm like a culture shock. This is mummy, darling. She's back. Real mummy? Real mummy. Why don't you go and give her a big hug and a kiss? That's all right. That's right. We've got plenty of time for that. Now, today, we can rejoice with the family as we welcome Lindy home. inadequate to say how we feel, to express our gratitude for your love and your care and your prayers. It reaches out to us like a blanket, surrounds us. It's t totally tangible. The fight for justice has only just started. You may think it's over, but believe me, it's only just the beginning. And it's not only for us, for our freedom and to clear our name, but it's for all Australians. We never want to see this happen in Australia again. God bless you all and be with you. Now that Lindy's out of jail, why are you still fighting? Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize how important innocence is to innocent people. <laughs> 